Hello and welcome to this Wealth of Advice market update recorded on the 3rd of April 2024. So we record this update uh, immediately after the first quarter of 2024, which I'm sure all clients who log in and check the valuations will appreciate that markets are continuing to go up, which is absolutely fantastic. A very positive uh, period. Go back six months ago, I've mentioned on one or two other videos, the mood and the feel of everything has totally changed over that time. What's brought that about? Well, it is the perception that uh, interest rates in the Europe, in the UK, in the US are likely to come down over the summer months. Uh, maybe not as quickly as we perhaps hoped previously, but markets are really, really on a, on a, on a upward trend as a result of that. Um, and the first chart we're going to put on the screen that you can see right now shows which stocks uh, and which sectors, if you like, over the first quarter of 2024 have ended on a high note. Uh, I read an article recently which was saying that all good uh, bull markets, uh, which is where markets increase in value over the long term, are rotational and that means that there will be some stocks which lead the charge, which was the technology stocks that we spoke about last year uh, quite a bit. But now if you look at sort of the sectors on here now, you'll see that's broken down and lots of other areas are now starting to perform well. So the US stock market rally uh, is broadening across all sectors. It's great. That's not simply driven by those magnificent seven stocks. If that were to have continued to happen, then you would have legitimately said, is the bubble forming because all the growth in these seven stocks. So you want it to, uh, to, to be across all sectors. The S&P, which is the uh, main index in America, 500 companies over there, uh, had its best quarter uh, in the first quarter of 2024. Uh, but over the last 12 months, I think it's up over 30% over that period of time. The FTSE 100, uh, the main index that we look at in the UK, of the UK's top 100 largest companies, uh, that briefly passed the 8,000 barrier, uh, reaching its highest point in its entire history. It did it for a few minutes uh, again yesterday and then went back down to 7,900 nod. Uh, but this um, has been happening as well because oil companies uh, dominate the FTSE 100 and uh, crude oil prices have gone up again, uh, reaching $88 a barrel, which is a six month high and it's based on geopolitical risk. That will be a negative for the inflation figures. If inflation's good, interest rates come down. It's still a balanced act across all these sectors that the markets continue to be happy, but sentiment's good at the moment. Uh, Chinese manufacturing data is showing signs of improvement. So again, that country, people like Mr. Trump, etc., blamed for bringing COVID to the world. I think part of the reason why you can say that it's not actually true is because the COVID lockdowns caused China so many problems. They were locked down for almost three years, remember? Um, so now that China has opened and is re-emerging from its lockdowns, it is taking a slow while to get such a massive country back on track again. But the fact that Chinese manufacturing data is improving is good and that will be a benefit to markets uh, all over the world. The Swiss National Bank uh, surprised markets around the world with a 0.25% uh, interest rate cut um, in March. That was one of the first major banks, or the first major bank around the world that started cutting rates. It's believed that the US will cut rates three times this year. Um, the, the, the chairman of the Federal Reserve is, 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 is now talking again, positive markets like that. Why is markets shut up? Because what Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell says has a massive impact on markets. And he's saying that basically they think their policy of raising interest rates has worked. They now believe they're at the peak of that cycle and they're going to look to reduce them uh, maybe this year. Uh, Bank of England held their rates. It's 5.25% uh, in the last meeting that was held. Uh, but again, it's in the small print. Why did uh, the pound weaken it, for instance, in the days after we kept interest rates at 5.25%? Well, that was because in the small print it said we expect to cut UK interest rates uh, this year. So uh, people think a big foreign exchange dealers look at that and say, well, the pound needs to weaken because interest rates in the UK will come down. If interest rates all over the world come down at the same time, then the pound may level off. But Andrew Bailey said uh, the bank... Um, uh, is going to do that. They're also looking at wage growth as an issue in the UK. It's still too high. 6.2% is where UK wage growth is, which is great for people out there who are earning money, but ultimately it is inflationary. So again, whilst on one side of the, of, of the small print we're reading that it's going to be positive interest rates may come down, the other side saying, well, we need to keep an eye on what wages are doing and they are remaining, or wage price growth is remaining persistently high. Uh, the Bank of Japan, um, a new story which I mentioned to a couple of clients really should have been front page world news the day it happened but the Bank of Japan finally got its interest rates back to zero therefore ending this period in our recent history where we had negative interest rates from central banks 
uh, it only made fourth or fifth main headline on most uh, news channels when your websites when you were clicking on but the Bank of Japan getting interest rates back to zero I think is absolutely fantastic because what it does signal is the end of that sort of negative interest rate period we got our interest rates up to five and a quarter percent we would hope that interest rates around about three percent is what you would call in normal regular interest rate level so hopefully we're getting closer back to those levels so we now come to the part of the presentation where we look at what markets have done um, over the recent period i mentioned right at the top of this um, presentation that the first quarter of 2024 has been really positive it has the s p 500 in america uh, was up 11.11%. The MSCI World Index was up 9.47%, and our wonderful FTSE 100 there, languishing right at the bottom, 3.76%. But you'll notice with the FTSE in the last couple of weeks, it's jumped up again. So it was negative uh, end of January going into February, but it is sort of climbing back up, as we mentioned there, with the oil prices coming back up. Uh, look at it over 12 months SP 26.61%. MSCI World Index is over 20%. All portfolios that we have clients invested in will be dominated by the US and by world stocks. UK in everyone's portfolios only represents a very small portion now, uh, but over the last 12 months, FTSE is up over 8%. We now look at this over five years, uh, and as you can see, S&P dominating there, 104.7% over that five year period. Um, little cynical point to raise here, uh, in our last budget, uh, the Chancellor announced a new ISA uh, coming into play from next year. Nobody really knows exactly how that's going to work yet. Where you'll be allowed to invest up to £25,000 into a stocks and shares ISA, provided you are invested. The extra 5000 that you're going to invest will be investing in the UK and UK stocks. So that sounds great. Some tax tricks, the tax free savings you can squirrel away. But if you'd have done that five years ago, and you'd have been getting 29.63% on the extra five grand, would you be happy or would you rather put your extra five grand at the US stock market or a world index? The fact of the matter is we need UK stocks to be performing better to get more growth. The growth that we've seen on the UK stock market over the last five years has been very pitiful when you look at it in comparison to the other world stock markets. Again, this is why with a well-balanced portfolio diversified across all of the major asset classes, and having fund managers and advisors who can make changes, we will make changes to the portfolios to try and search out the better growth areas. So thanks again for listening to a Wealth of Advice Market Update. Uh, very, very positive at the moment with markets going up. Clients are feeling a lot more positive. Uh, if you want to get in touch before your next annual review to let us know anything that's going on in your lives, please do so. Uh, get in touch with your regular people here at Wealth of Advice.